Alors, pour faire la transition entre cette première table ronde et la deuxième, on vous propose un entretien vidéo de Michael Edberg, euh, donc, euh, qui est directeur artistique et scénariste de jeux très connus comme Soma, Amnesia, The Dark Descent et le dernier, Alone in the Dark. En régie, si on peut lancer euh, la vidéo. Merci. Oh shit, I'm a bag of Milky Way. Ah! 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 Oh my god. <laughs> Hello everyone at Centre Georges Pompidou. I'm Michael Hedberg. I'm a game developer. I've been making horror games for about 15 years or so. Started with um, uh, Amnesia, really, I would say. It was my big first introduction into the sort of genre. I've been dabbling a little bit with it beforehand, but that was my first big project as a writer. I went on to do Soma. And lately, I uh, made Alone in the Dark, uh, where I also sort of took on the role as creative director. So uh, yeah, it's been a long journey, and <laughs> uh, it's been a, a wild ride. While I make horror games, I don't think of it as simply making horror. I think of first as making stories that contain horror. So it's more of an element rather than a, a, a sort of a restraining genre for me. So I really like mysteries. That's kind of where I start at. And then I, I, I like to imagine a player uh, you know, unraveling a mystery and sort of getting deeper into it and then finding out that they're kind of trapped in some way, that they're sort of uh, unlocking a mystery that is dangerous to them. Uh, so that's kind of my approach to it. Um, I wouldn't really want to do something that is simply there to scare, because that would be more like a, a haunted mansion or something like that. That's, that would be something that you would do at Disneyland or something like that. And, and that's fine if that's what you want, but for a game, I think, you would want something a little bit more substantial, something a little bit longer, you know, a little bit deeper. What are you? Are you blind? It's me, Carl. Carl Semke. Wrangler? Any of this sound familiar to you? I know, actually. Oh, for sure. There, there's a lot of things that happen hasn't really been explored. I would say there's a lot of things that you could try to use. I'm hesitant to do it myself because I, I feel like you would have to want to do something more experimental uh, than the kind of games that I've been um, along for. Um, so what I'm kind of talking about there is things like you could do input, you, you could track the players, for instance, their breathing or, you know, their their pulse or, you know, the, 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 the amount of sounds that they make or, you know, the kind of noise that they're making around themselves that could sort of alert monsters and things like that. I think the only one that I'm kind of curious about, it was this um, um, test that I saw someone do where um, they had... Um, they had their own glasses. It, it wasn't VR, it was just that they had glasses. And this is a main point, actually. I, I wouldn't want to do this in VR. The idea would be that you have like a, you know, you, you have glasses on so that the, the game can track kind of how you're looking at the screen. And that would make you allow the player to basically look around corners in a way. And also not just corners in the games, but it would actually make you allow you to look around the corner of the screen. It's really difficult to explain, but I thought that was a really sort of neat way to allow for a player to interact with the game without it becoming too gimmicky, 
you know, I, I would want the play to still feel, feel naturally immersed. And I think we have had at least 30 years, oh, well, maybe 25, where in, in the way that we teach the player how to interact with the game. So the way that we interact with the game is pretty much sort of, you know, it's, we have a complete model of that. And I think sort of stepping outside of that model makes the player already go, oh, this is something new, and they kind of distance themselves. So I, I still think that sort of the classic either first person view or the third person view is the sort of the way that we as players uh, tend to enjoy games and we expect games to play out. So I would still like to try to stay within that model in some way and just take small steps outside. But yeah, there are definitely things that you could experiment with. And I think the more that we will see VR, you know, come along, you know, I think location is incredibly important uh, simply because when you look at horror games, what you often like to do to uh, sort of create the horror ambience is to reduce combat. And what do you leave the player with if you reduce combat? It's just sort of being somewhere, you know, it's like looking around. I um, so one thing that I remember talking about when describing sort of the the, the way the play would be inside their setup um, would be almost kind of like a tourist. You know, they would kind of be allowed to just lounge about, you know, <laughs> and look at things and, and be sort of, oh, what's this? You know, I wonder what happened here. So I definitely think that's uh, important. And both for building sort of a, a world where, where it's interesting to be. But uh, in many cases for like Silent Hill or, you know, Resident Evil villages and, you know, things like that, you're able to create something that closes off the player from some, something else, you know? So you would say, you're it, basically telling the player, this is where you are. You're not allowed outside of this thing. Um, so, um, uh, and, and that's useful for the player. So they uh, sort of know what what they're uh, expected to do and not to do. Um, this is something that you find if you play role-playing games, like tabletop role-playing games sometimes, is that uh, the boundaries aren't that clear. And sometimes the players might just be uh, like, well, we'll just take a ride to the other side of the town then, you know, and, and, the, and the game master will be, no, don't do that. You know, you're kind of breaking the pacing of the game or something like that. So that's kind of useful. I do have a fun little sort of anecdote to that. Um, uh, you can cut this out if you don't think you have the time for it. But um, when, we were doing the, when we were doing Amnesia, the, uh, this, the, the castle where everything took place was so restricted um, that it started to feel um, artificial in a bad way. Uh, so what we did was that we, we figured out like one good place where we could break a window uh, because you couldn't really look outside of the windows in our game. So you could break the window and you could walk out to the, the window ledge and jump to the next window. And Outside, you would just see, you know, like a vista of trees and things like that. It was nothing spectacular. But I remember being able to see that sort of in the game. And that immediately just sort of released this artificiality, in a, in a sense. It just sort of made it feel like, oh, okay, so if there's something outside of this window, then there's something outside of all of the windows. And I, I thought that was a really fascinating and uh, powerful um, effect of just something so I'm simple there was a lot of work have you found anything strange going on here yes
I mean, you can always do horror very cheaply. I mean, we could imagine, a, you know, the most non-story app ever. You know, we could imagine like a, a game that you start up just sort of running in the background of your computer and every, you know, and randomly every now and then it goes, Hoo! you know, and that could be a horror game, you know. Uh, but of course, for me, uh, it's much more important important to do something more you know i i i like to tell stories i think stories are important i think it's almost like exercising empathy in a way you know all the kind of stories that we tell and we hear is we learn about um what it means to be human and you know how humans live and what concerns us so um, yeah I, I mean it, it sounds you know lofty but to me it's important to to tell stories so i i like to do that part as well and for me to for an, a horror game to be uh, truly interesting there has to be something there you know uh, there has to be something more than just the monster or you know or the the scares there has to be something that i'm unraveling a mystery and um preferably it will tell me something about uh, what it means to be a human or you know tell me maybe something about what what was important for the developers um so yeah um i i will try to continue <laughs> making you know stories and uh, um to show maybe the audience uh, something that i find to be interesting or noteworthy or you know maybe educational um but of course also something that is entertaining <laughs> I, I i guess that, that that's perhaps the most the important part of it all um because you know i wouldn't you could always see the flip side right i wouldn't want to do something that just feels like i'm telling the audience something that would also be boring you know, the, the power of making a game is that you can get a player invested to be a part of the telling of a story, you know, and the sort of the experience. And that they will feel um, like they're telling it with us, the developers. Um, so it, it's not just important for us, but it becomes important for them. And ultimately, it, it's up to the audience to decide what they think of it, you know, and how they um, value their experience. I, I think this is sort of mostly, pertains mostly to when I think about uh, the work I did with Soma. You know, it was something that was so kind of profoundly connected to what it means to be human and our limitations and uh, what we would do uh, to sort of continue on and. Uh, what what would be worth to sort of uh, continue as well um and i love always being approached by people telling me how they sort of uh, thought about it you know either how it changed your mind or you know how they sort of felt like uh, no this was obvious for why didn't he do this or whatever you know i love that part it's always interesting uh, i think the really shows you that there's such a wide variety of people playing and I think all of them having their own unique experience is really, really valuable in a way. You know, again, I'm starting to sound um, uh, lofty and you know, maybe a little bit <laughs> silly, but it, there, there's, there's, there's real value here, I, I, would, I would like to argue. And um, I hope that um, people are moved truly by by the stuff that we do and that they keep wanting more Today, the American expeditionary forces may consider John. In I think I've lost my head the brave men oh, John. Defenders, not of just Europe. I am sorry I can't do this what's the matter Emily lies more lies Three. The real fears, or uh, whatever we want to dub them, uh, that we, we find ourselves um, faced with 
I think stories and definitely horror games are ways to sort of work through these. You know, you can sort of you you can kind of uh, have these sort of mind games where you get to experience the the worst parts or the best parts of different things, and it, maybe you feel a little bit more um, you know ready for for real life if you digest them through media. Uh, so I definitely think there there's a value to it. Um, I don't think you should stray away from them because uh, it's, some, of course, are more. Um, it, it would be so related to actual reality that it becomes difficult to handle. You know, the the the, the power of a story is that you abstract. Uh, you know, you pull away from real life, and you're able to say, you know hey, this thing that goes on in real life that is really horrible, let's imagine it like this. And now we can talk about it in a way without it feeling too raw. Uh, and, you know, uh, it, without it actually sort of viscerally hurting, you know, while experiencing it. Um, I mean, th that's how stories have worked for thousands of years. So um, I, I wouldn't want to stop doing that. We are on the earth, you idiot! I didn't lie! I can't be responsible for your goddamn ignorance! You Catherine? Please don't leave me alone. Catherine? Catherine? Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for coming. <laughs>